Welcome to PALS. It's Professor Yangu's Anatomy Lecture Series. In today's lecture, we'll be considering the topic trigeminal nerve. In looking at this nerve, a very great nerve, we'll be considering it in various topics. We'll look at various parts of the nerve, like its root, its ganglion, its divisions, and then the branches from these divisions. Also, in the course of the lecture, our series on this topic will be considering the course of the various divisions and the distribution and also the applied anatomy. But for today's episode, we'll just consider the basic information around the nerve. We'll look at the nuclei. We'll also consider the functional components and then the parts. So we hope we have a wonderful time. So sit tight. Let's start with the basic information. Number one, and this nerve is the largest of all the 12 cranial nerves. It's a mixed nerve, that means it has a sensory part and a motor part. This nerve is predominantly sensory. There are three big parts of this nerve we'll be considering. In fact, this nerve is usually seen as three nerves combined as one, the ophthalmic, the maxillary, and the mandibular parts. We'll be considering them in the course of the class. This nerve is the motor nerve of all the muscles of mastication and then other several muscles we mentioned in the course of the class. It is also the principal sensory nerve to the head and face. We will begin with its embryological origin. It is derived from the first pharyngeal arch. And by this we will see that it is going to be innervating all the muscles from the first pharyngeal arch. What are these muscles? One, the muscles of mastication. I will be constricting the temporalis, masseter, and pterygoid under this group. We also have other muscles like anterior belly of digastric, the mylohyoid, the tensor tympani, and tensor veli palatini. So these are all the muscles that are derived from the first pharyngeal arch, and all these muscles are innervated by the trigeminal nerve. So the major part of this nerve are the nuclei, the roots, the ganglion, the divisions, and the branches. We will focus on the nuclei now. This nerve is composed of four nuclei. Three out of these nuclei are sensory and only one is motor. Now, the sensory nuclei are the mesencephalic nucleus that is found in the midbrain, the only one seen at the level of the midbrain, and then we have the main sensory nucleus, which is seen at the level of the upper pons. Also, following that is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal, which is located at the lower part of this um, main sensory nucleus, and will run distally through the whole length of the medulla and up to the level of the second to third cervical segments of the spinal cord. Finally, we see the motor nucleus, which is also located at the level of the upper pons. The functional components. The functional components of this nerve are basically two. We have these two very important fibers, the special visceral efferent fibers, and number two, the general somatic afferent fibers. The special visceral efferent fibers are fibers that arise from the motor nucleus of trigeminal. And these are fibers that will supply all the muscles that are derived from the first pharyngeal arch, just as we've mentioned at the beginning of this lecture. The general somatic afferent fibers are basically made up of two sets of fibers. The first fibers are the ones we call the esteroceptive fibers, and these are the fibers that will be transmitting esteroceptive sensation, that is the sensations of pain, touch, and temperature, from the skin of the head and face, mucous membrane of the mouth, nasal cavity, the meninges. These sensations will be transmitted to the main sensory nucleus and the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal. The other set of fibers under these general somatic afferent fibers are the proprioceptive fibers. These fibers carry proprioceptive sensations, that is the sensation of position, movement and balance, from the muscles of mastication, temporomandibular joint, 
and teeth and will relay this sensation to the mesencephalic nucleus at the midbrain. The esteroceptive neurons have their cell bodies located in the trigeminal ganglion. While the same is not for the proprioceptive neurons, these neurons have their cell bodies all the way into the brainstem in the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Now we'll start with the sensory nuclei and we'll, take, we'll start with mesencephalic nucleus. As we already know, it is seen at the level of the midbrain. This nucleus is a unique structure because it is the only structure in central nervous system that contains the cell bodies of first order sensory neurons. The first order sensory neurons are not seen in the brainstem nor in any other part of central nervous system. They are seen outside this part. So by this role of the mesencephalic nucleus, it is sometimes considered functionally as a sensory ganglion. A ganglion is a part, is a structure that has the cell bodies of neurons within it. That is when we see them outside the central nervous system. And we're seeing this one inside the central nervous system. So the mesencephalic nucleus is considered as a sensory ganglion that is stuck within the brainstem. The cell bodies of the neurons found here are said to be pseudo-unipolar neurons. Others consider it as unipolar neurons. As we already know, the proprioceptive fibers relay at this nucleus. The next nucleus is the primary or main sensory nucleus. This also is seen at the level of the upper part of the pond. It lies lateral to the motor nucleus. It receives general somatic afferent fibers too, but this time the impulses of touch and pressure only from skin and mucous membrane of facial region. The spinal nucleus of trigeminal extends from the lower part of the principal sensory nucleus and runs through the medulla to the second and third spinal segment, as we already know. It actually continues instantly as the substantia gelatinosa. This nucleus can be subdivided into subnucleus oralis, subnucleus interporalis, and subnucleus caudalis. We know that it receives general somatic afferent fibers, but this time impulses of pain and temperature, while touch and pressure are received at the main sensory nucleus. It is important for us to note this. The motor nucleus, also seen at the level of the upper part of the pond, lies media to the principal sensory nucleus. We know that it gives off efferent fibers that will run to innervate all of the muscles that are derived from the first pharyngeal arch, as we have listed them in the beginning of our lecture. We will consider the cause and the distribution of this uh, nerve. This is picking origin from the brainstem at the point of the midbrain, the pon, the medulla, and even the upper two segments of the spinal, upper two, three segments of the spinal cord. So this nerve will emerge, exit the brainstem as two roots, the motor root and the sensory root. And this emergence is at the junction of the pon and middle cerebellar peduncle. At this point, the motor root lies ventromedial to the sensory root. They will pass anteriorly to the middle cranial fossa, where they will get to the level of the cavum trigeminal, which is also known as Merkel's cave. We are going to give more information of this point because this is a dura pouch where the sensory root now continues as the trigeminal ganglion. At this point of the cavum trigeminal, the motor root lies inferior to the sensory root. The sensory root, which will continue as the trigeminal ganglion, will now divide into three parts. So the trigeminal ganglion will divide 
into three parts. This, these parts are the V1 division, V2 division, and V3 division, or the ophthalmic nerve, ophthalmic division, or the ophthalmic division, the maxillary division, and the mandibular division. Motor root turns further inferiorly with the V3 or mandibular division from the trigeminal ganglion, and both will exit from the skull through an opening called the foramen ovale. By the time they emerge at the infratemporal fossa, they are now called the mandibular nerve. So mandibular nerve is a combination of the mandibular division and the motor root of the trigemina, having two parts, a sensory part and a motor part. Now back to the interior of the skull, where we are still having the other two divisions. The ophthalmic division will move anteriorly and will exit from the skull through an opening called the superior orbital fissure. It will enter another bony cavity called the orbital cavity. The maxillary division will also exit the skull, this time through an opening called foramen rotundum. So these three divisions all exit the skull, the mandibular division to the infratemporal fossa, the ophthalmic division into the orbital cavity, and the maxillary division into the pterygopalatine fossa. We will continue with these divisions in the next class where we are going to take them one by one. But for now, we look at the ganglion. Now, the trigeminal ganglion is a sensory ganglion. It is also known as semilunar ganglion, gasserial ganglion, or trigeminal ganglion. It is semilunar or chrysenteric in shape. We have cell bodies of neuron within it, which are pseudo-unipolar neurons. So where do we find this trigeminal ganglion in the middle cranial fossa, lying on the temporal bone of the skull. The part of temporal bone of the skull where it lies on is the petrous part of the temporal bone on its apex. So the trigeminal ganglion lies on the apex of the petrous part of the temporal bone on the lateral aspect of the cavernous sinus. This part is inside a dura pouch called the Merkel's cave. Now we'll look at the parts of trigeminal ganglion. Trigeminal ganglion has these two parts, the central process and the peri peripheral process. The central process is a process we already know as the sensory route, which ran from this process to the pond at the level of, at the junction of the pond with the middle cerebellar peduncle. Now, the peripheral processes are the ones we've already known as the divisions, which are the V1, V2, V3 divisions. A little focus on the relations of this ganglion. Medially, we'll be seeing the internal carotid artery and the posterior part of the cavernous sinus, while laterally, we see the middle meningeal artery. Above it, we we'll have the parahippocampal gyrus, while inferiorly, we we'll find the motor root of trigeminal nerve and another nerve, greater petrosal nerve, and then the bone that they're lying on, which is the apex part of the petrous temporal bone, with an opening around this region called the foramen lacerum. The arterial supply to the trigeminal ganglion is the ganglionic branches of the internal carotid artery, middle meningeal artery, and accessory meningeal artery. This is where we'll stop in this first part of trigeminal nerve. We hope we'll be able to present it simple enough for it to make a lot of sense. In subsequent lectures, we'll be taking the various parts and be considering the cause and the branches. Thank you very much for listening through. If you're joining us for the first time, we would love you to please subscribe and be a part of this anatomy family where we make 
anatomy simple. Do not forget to pick the videos for the remaining parts of this topic so that you will have a very good understanding of trajimian nerve. Thank you so much and see you in our next video.